Harbor Archives and Special Collections. The three of us are coming on. We started the series last spring. We invite two faculty members from different disciplines to help us look closely at the individual work of art that we're looking at non-people. It's Charlotte Morning, too. Our two speakers, Nikki, would you ask them to turn down the speaker, please? Our two speakers today are both from Bose Center. I know nothing. I'm not, I'm not really um, in the arts, although I should be more into the arts. Uh, but I got, and this is, I'm ostensibly here because of the video aspect of this piece of work. But in fact, I'm a historian as well, and I approach the sculpture from an industrial archaeological point of view. What are these TV sets? Where do they come from? What do they speak to? And uh, I always try to somehow get an Armenians or motor, uh, Chicago into my <laughs> conversations that Armenians really don't work here, but uh, <laughs> Motorola's 1947, the first traveling model, the Motorola suitcase model made outside of Chicago. And this would have had... Schaumburg, right? Yes, Schaumburg, <laughs> to which I've never been. And here we have the antenna and we would have had 12 tubes inside and a cover. So this is 1948 kitchen model. And up here we have a 1950 generic model that was sold by Admiral Emerson and Motorola. And we notice that the artists played around here. The pace. So that's uh, is this about TV and video? Not really. And we have a, a smattering of uh, different times and places. Uh, these Geniflex tubes are from the late, late 50s. And they were made in Britain. This Amplex has nothing to do with consumer video or electronics, but was used in military um, uh, radios. So what does this say, speak to, in terms of subjects of interest to Brandeis faculty and students? Well, it speaks to globalization. This is made in China. This now in Moscow, and you all, is it also China? Yeah, two, two factories primarily in, in Russia. The tubes? They're valves, actual. Yeah, well, they're you know part of the electronic circuit, and they were replaced with the invention of the transistor. And now you would have ceramic. The now they have ceramics. Well, no longer no longer you have yeah, it's come back. I mean, because they sound differently from the devices built with transistors. So there are people who were really listening very carefully often buy equipment with tubes, including guitar amps. So all of a sudden we discovered something that we thought was an antiquated technology is in demand. And we weren't making it anymore. So they started ramping up to make it in other countries. And I think what's so interesting about this piece is you could see it in many different ways. If you look back, it's of one piece and you really don't concentrate on the video. The video is like a palette. It gets color, it gets pattern. But if you look more closely, 
was Charlotte. So it's a very interesting piece. Um, also, one thing I've discovered is that um, it's always, it's always, you have to be very careful when you submit work. So you can always find typos in things. So this is not two cellos. This is the bass and a smallish cello. And my yeah, it's got to be a student cello. What do you think? Three quarter, like half? It looks like a full size cello to me. That was my first take on it, but I'm not so sure anymore. Here? At first I thought so, but I'm not so sure. scale here is, is interesting and it would be, I think it would be a far less interesting piece if it were to uh, to jelly, in fact, in the fact that it's a bass. I was disturbed by that initially. I remember when it came into the space uh, when Joe Kepner and, and the acquisition committee were considering bringing it in and I looked at the thing and said, that's not a jelly. <laughs> and I was a little disturbed by it, but in fact, um, you know, it's got this monumental scale. And remember, this is a portrait piece. You know, so that's part of the statement that's being made right there. You know, that's about the scale of the piece. So, um, in fact, the fact that I know that that's a base, in a way, is misleading because the whole piece, I think, the scale of the figure says, you know, I want this to be the body of the figure, and I want a big monumental piece. So you need, obviously, an anthropomorphic, obviously. You know, and so you've got things that are sort of cubist here, but then you've also got the, the cliche. Of the cello or the bass, especially the cello. What about the piano? Form, right? I don't know. I think these are piano strings. Just they. We were discussing this. Uh, at they look like pieces of piano strings to me. That's the only thing they could be. The, the gauge is too is just too heavy. Yeah. Um, but you know, I mean, details like that. You know, what what goes into it? I'm in a way less interested with the musical elements than I am with the fact that you've got these early TV sets. These antique. Debbie, did you say that this says somewhere about it that they're that's antique? He calls them antique. Which very specifically, because one of the forty-eight. I mean, that's really early. And one of the um, again, one of the reactions I had to this, looking at the elements initially, was, did they really have TVs that small at that point? I, you know, because my memory and and I'm of that era. Uh, not that I have a memory in 1955, but that's when I was born. And the first TV we had in the house was about this big, and it had a screen that size. You know, and in fact, my parents had it in the house until the house was sold just this past year. Uh, and it's this big RCA thing that was, you know, I used to watch whatever Howdy Doody was on the, on, on the screen that big, which we thought was a miracle. So the idea that there are these portable units is, is kind of okay. And they, they, they were let around. And that there was a cover, a cover that went over here. Alice, did you say that was a kitchen model? It was meant to be in somebody's kitchen? We, well, my parents had one in their kitchen. Uh -huh. it, yeah, it's on a shelf. Uh -huh. That's why it's small. Yeah. And then, and then we had the big zenith with, you know, the carpentry and everything. And it's sort of interesting how, although large was better, that already we had transportable units as early as 1948. There's a, um, I don't know if anyone has been in San Francisco airport in the last couple of months, but you know, that's the only place that you have a kind of didactic experience as you're walking to gate. They have a little museum, you know, oh, that okay. area in the United Terminal. And right now it's on the evolution of the TV, and they have all the ad copy, but these were introduced in the late, was the late oh, 40s. Yes. They have them here, and the ads are all about the scale and about the ability to watch TV in your kitchen. So I guess it must have been to take TV out of the living room yeah. and into these spaces where you could multitask in effect. And so they, they have these it, on display right now, some version of this, but it was a big moment when you could get the screen into a portable 